All right. We'll, what's the song? As a what song? Uh oh. Anyway, it's good to see y'all here this evening. We're going to get started with 376. Take time to be holy. You see y'all this evening at Anchor Baptist Church. We're going to start at 376. Take time to be holy. Speak off of thy Lord. Abide in him always and keep on his word. 376. Take time to be holy. Speak off with thy Lord. Abide in him always and be on his word. Make friends of thy children. Build those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing is blessing to see. see. Is this my, do I have my marching orders? I have my marching orders. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Good to see y'all here this evening. We got all kinds of stuff coming up. Uh, we got skit practice for Friendsgiving every Sunday after church. Um, after the morning service, and then Christmas or practice for the Christmas play every Sunday at 2 p.m. Uh, and now it's going to go into December. We've got one practice left, Sister Smoot, for Friendsgiving. One, okay. You said that. On, well, when is it? I know you said that, and I was like, no, it's Friendsgiving. I was like, no, Friendsgiving is early in November. I was all, I was all ready for all of those, but it's going to be early in November. Friendsgiving is Sunday, November 6th. So keep that in prayer. Uh, keep inviting people, handing out flyers, tell people to come. Uh, I'd like to see some people get in here, get some, get the gospel, get some encouragement, and uh, get back on their feet. Uh, the Board of Trustees meeting is November 13th, street preaching November 20th, and then door hanging is November 27th. Um, choir practice was canceled for December 4th, so they're going to do another door hanging on Sunday, December 4th. Um, And then Samson Ryman will be here, this, let's see, December 9th through 11th. So that'll be a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday with Brother Ryman. Uh, the church play will be on the 11th, which is that Sunday. And then Sunday, December 25th, assuming there won't be church. There might be something. <coughs> um, anything else? Anybody got anything else coming up? 
That's cool. All right. Prayer list. Uh, anybody got any? Anybody got good witnesses this week? Sister Smooth. Right. Nephew got put in the hospital today. Got a chance to witness and make sure they're safe. And it's a good thing to be sure of. So that's a blessing there. Uh, Monday was my last day of work uh, for Clark, and I did my. When you leave the company, you do your big complimentary. Thanks so long. Thanks everybody for all your help. And I love all of you dearly. And blah blah blah. Um, but I got to put a big. Uh, Gonna put the Bible verse at the end of it and put a big thing that says, Hey, come to church. Come by sometime. If you miss me, I'm on the live stream every Sunday at 10 a.m. Um, I had a lot of people tell me they'd like to. So if you're watching and you work for Clark Construction, you should be here. <laughs> but I had a lot of people tell me they would they wanted to come, they wanted to see, they wanted to spend the Bible with them. So you know, I'm just praying they want to see some of them come through here. Anybody else? Under under South, or anybody need a prayer list? Anybody need a prayer list? Everybody's got a prayer list. Just pray for you. This is that. This is that thing we haven't figured out yet. All right, uh, salvation. Uh, anybody need to put anyone else for salvation? Sister Mickey? Do not perform this road we passed on.
Appreciate that. Yes. That's your, oh, okay. All right. I 
how she spelled that. All right, so Sister Mickey, you're a blessing to have here, Sister. Honestly, you are. Yes, we got all the priests and nuns. We'll go to church. That's and we're gonna sing a couple songs and go home. Uh, so just a couple things. Keep in prayer for Sister Mickey. Um, just with praise and God, it is. I have learned myself that it, you get. I get in church and I get stuck. It's like, well, how come I'm not like this? It's like God, I need to praise you. The Bible says God inhabits and praises other people, and God moves in that. And if you're not a a vocal person, pray and ask God to help you with that. That's a, that, It's a process with me, honestly, for a long time. Amen. And if you're, if you're, I'll say this, is a, some people I know you're quiet all the time, I'm pretty quiet most of the time too, but if you're quiet here and you're not quiet out at a baseball game, there's a problem. If you're quiet all the time, you say, God help me to be a better praiser. That's, that's two different problems. But say, you know what? I'm going to try and do this better for God. God's done a lot for me. I want to make sure he gets the glory he deserves out of it. Test question on that. Um, now, the broken leg, that's your son's dog, right? Okay. I wanted to make sure that was the dog and not the son I was. Uh, so Mickey's son's dog uh, has a broken leg, and he's going to be sedated for a couple weeks. So just keep them in prayer. Tank. Ooh, he's a bulldog. His name's Tank. Uh, Mickey's niece... Uh, Kwaji has a broken ankle from a car accident. Keep her in prayer. Uh, her friend Diana needs wisdom. Um, just being given. We have a friend like that as well. Where you just want to just, just pray that God gives her wisdom on what to give and how to do it. Uh, Don Israel is your brother, correct? He's doing better, and they're trying to get a permanent living arrangement for him. And then her son is getting ordained this Sunday in New Jersey. So keep that in prayer. That's a good Lots of good stuff there. Um, yes. Oh. Yes. She works in a coffee shop in the lobby of a church. There's probably 10% of the people that work there are saved. There's three lesbians, and the guy that runs it isn't saved. But keep, keep her boss, Nick Cartram, in prayer. Um, he's, he's open to it. She's gotten a couple of opportunities, and she's, he's fertile ground. And we're going to try and have him over so I can get an opportunity to witness to him. And he just, I think he just needs the gospel presented sincerely. I think he's dealt with a lot of insincerity, if I had to guess. And then keep Chloe in prayer. Michelle works with her all the time. She'd like to see her saved, and she's she is a lesbian, and that's a there's a spirit with that that's hard to be around. So keep her in prayer. Anybody else under salvation? Brother Glista. Okay, he's Ray Ladner is a friend of Brother Glister's. He's a retired crane mechanic, and he is, he needs to get saved. Anybody else under salvation? All right, sickness. Sickness, Pastor and Sister Serena still? No, Sister Serena. Sister Serena's fine. She's, uh, this is per we'll put this on record. Sister Serena is, she is fine. Pastor, keep Pastor in prayer. He's uh, been up and down with sinuses all year, and the rains have kicked in. If you have sinus problems, the rain is no fun. So keep, uh, keep Pastor in prayer. Oh, 
something. So keep Lyra Simpson in prayer under sickness. Uh, Sister Smoot's nephew, who's got some heart issues. They, we're, you said they're going to put a pacemaker in, or they might? Yeah, they're going to put a pacemaker in. Okay, let's see if I can. Okay. All right. So keep Lyra Simpson in prayer. So pray that if, if they have a treatment for it that doesn't involve a pacemaker, that he does it, he sticks to it, and then it works. Gotcha. Sister Nikki? Folks in here? Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Pray one for another. Pray you one for another. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. All right. So keep Brother Borman's sister in prayer. She is definitely saved. Pastor Letter of the Lord, and she she knows she's saved, but her health is failing. So keep her in prayer. She would rally. Yeah, I would have a hand in that. Anybody else on sickness? All right, answers to prayer. We need a good answer to prayer this week. Thank God I'm going through a job transition and it's going well. Praying that things go and people keep the promises that they said they were going to keep. But thank God it's gone very well so far. I was afraid they were going to fire me, and they did not. It's a blessing. Uh, political things. So, 
Um, others. Anything under others? Under there? All right. Ladies with child. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, unspokens. One, two, three, four, five, six. God knows. Six. Um, working job situation. Uh, Lord willing, will be starting a new job on Tuesday. Sister Jackie. All right, that's, we're going to pray for that. All right, Sister Jackie got a big job. She needs the weather to clear up. When you run a business, that matters. So keep Sister Jackie in prayer. Pray that she gets good weather that she can work in. Um, working job. Did you have your hand up? Yeah, I just got it. <laughs> we haven't gotten to the point where we read each other's minds. I think we do, but it's in different languages. At least different dialects. We're getting there. It's getting better. Right now, I'm getting the shut up word from my. <laughs> I can't repeat it from the pulpit. <laughs> On the road, keep Sister Betty in prayer. She is driving to Kentucky and back. Uh, keep the hunters in prayer. They are on a big round trip right now. They are on their way to Arkansas. The Strubles are also in, on the way to Arkansas, and Brother Hansen decided he wanted to drive to Arkansas, too, so keep him in prayer. Um, also, Sister Christine is home by herself, so keep her in prayer and the whole family. Uh, Brother Simeon? Brother Simeon will be on the road this weekend. All right. Anybody got anything else? No one wants going to rice? All right. You got something else, so you just have to get right with God and pray for it by yourself. Mother. All right, <laughs> you're forgiven. Bible study courses. We're going to get this sorted out. Okay, I know Sister Betty's taking it for credit. Brother Jason, you and Sister Amanda, you all want to take it for credit, correct? Michelle, no. Jason, yes. Mich Amanda, no. Amanda's not there yet. It's all right, brother. I understand. Is anybody else taking it? Sister Jack? You want to? Okay, I want to get with the people that are taking it for credit just to make sure that things are sorted out because there's all kinds of... Confusion. <clears throat> yes. Yes. So I want to do the testing all at the same time. I want everybody to sit down and take the test at the same time, if at all possible. Um, if you pass the test, you will get credit if you ever go to TBDI from David Peacock. That's charity. Or uh, Blue Ridge. Blue Ridge is now TBDI. Um, so if TBDI, which is the Bible Doctrine Institute, which is run by David Peacock, which is what I did my master's degree, is the continuation of Blue Ridge Bible Institute. Jim Lynch started Blue Ridge Bible Institute years ago. He did all of his things by correspondence on cassette tapes. Uh, when he died, David Peacock took over and he turned it into the Bible Doctrine Institute out of, or out of Jacksonville, Florida. So that's a three-year program. It's very intense, but you can get out, I hate to say get out of classes. You can take some of those classes if you take them at Anchor, he accepts our credit. Uh, trust me, I've been to two different colleges that I have taken credits and applied them to, and you want to get out of class. Because that got me out of physics and English. Thank you, Lord. Yes. All right. Okay, so I will make sure that, I just want to make sure everybody has access to the information because I thought it was sorted out and it, it, it's a communication issue. I'm going to figure it out. But yes, including the test questions. The test questions are the last file when it comes to the teaching. All right, we're going to go.
It's, yes, that's how, that's how they did it when I was in school, so I want to do it now. But there's no way that you would pass if I didn't give you the test questions in advance. Not to scare y'all. All right, um, we're going to resume with prayer request. Uh, you want the smooch coming? Yes, all right. Smooch, if y'all could do the special, and then Pastor is going to preach. Well, good to have y'all here tonight. It's just what the mercy of God can do. Now I'm allowed to tell the story. Now I will overcome. It's His goodness and mercy. Yeah. 
I think yeah, it's good to see you guys tonight. Um, I guess at my age, I guess it's good to be seen. So, <clears throat> trying to get back into uh, finishing Proverbs for you guys, and my apologies uh, for not. But every once in a while, I get to working on teaching, and. Um, um, for some reason, I just decide, well, I probably ought to preach something, but that's between the Lord and me, I guess. But um, this um, lady that uh, is in Louisiana, this Sister Borman, I spoke with her. She does dialysis three times a week, and I guess it's sort of dear to my heart because my brother-in-law went through that, and uh, uh, real nice people when they were in that nursing home. He passed away in there, and uh, we got home from church that night, wasn't it? And got a phone call, you need to come get your brother-in-law or your brother. And I said, well, why do I need to do that? Well, he died this morning, really nice people. And I said, oh, gee, thank you for all the sympathy. <laughs> he said, were you being smart preacher? Yeah, I was. And if I was around him, I'd have been smarter. But... Um, they said, well, you got to get him out of here. And it, it just shows me people. Um, you know, no sympathy, no remorse in anything because they treated him horribly there. And I guess the point I'm trying to drive in is if you ever have a loved one, don't put them in a nursing home if you can avoid it. Honestly, before God. It's her grandmom died in one. Now her brother died in one. And uh, she felt like she let him down, but anyway. Go to Proverbs, if you would, please. I'm with the Proverbs. And uh, uh, I always have to go to my reliable source to find out where I was. Proverbs chapter 29, and uh, Brother Chuck always makes notes and keeps me straightened out. Well, he tries anyway. It's been 25, almost 30 years. He hadn't done it yet, so. But we're working on it, Chuck. Now, we are left off in, uh, I think, in a verse that I, I believe that has been misappropriated, misapplied. Uh, you know, we're living in a day and age where they're trying to question the, um, I guess, the, um, whether you're a male or a female or if God made a mistake. Now, you understand and I know this is being put on YouTube, and I personally don't care. To me, what you're saying when you try to tell a child that's a woman, that looks like a woman, that she's really not a woman, you're telling me that God made a mistake, and my God doesn't make mistakes. You understand that? Uh, you say, well, uh, I, I feel like a woman. Well, you ought to act like a man if you're a man. I'm not going to be sweet. That stuff is in the Bible. If you don't believe it, read Romans chapter 1. It's all you got to do. Doing that which is unseemly. Now, why would God say it's wrong and then make you wrong to do wrong and then call it sin? <laughs> Anybody got an answer to that? My God doesn't lie. 
The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. You know what that insinuates? Man will lie. Amen. <laughs> well, you didn't want me to teach anyway, did you? Look at Proverbs 29, look at verse 19, if you would. We left off and uh, <laughs> we left off on the, the one that I said that's very, you should be very memorable to you. I'm going to teach, so you don't need to stand, please. I don't want to make you stand for the next hour. Jason, stand, would you? All right. it, it, you know why he's standing? Because it takes him a long time to get down. <laughs> All right, For, <laughs> uh, I shouldn't do this. I'm on YouTube, but you, you all did it, so it's up to you. Um, chapter, <laughs> chapter 29, you got to understand, Jason and I, he's the guy who grabbed the steering wheel from me when I was coming back from Baltimore. You ain't driving me another inch. <laughs> he didn't know I did it on purpose, so he'd drive back. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I will get started, I promise. Look, look at <laughs> verse, oh my goodness, verse 19. A servant will not be corrected by words, for though he understand, he will not answer. And you know why he won't answer? A verse implies although he, uh, he will obey words, uh, but he won't do the words. The Bible says, be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Uh, you know, you, you can say, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know it was going to be like that. You know what that tells me? You hadn't spent any time in your Bible. You know, we want to wave King James up and down the pike, right? Well, I got a King James Bible, and I'm King James. You cut me, I bleed, J K J V. I understand that. But you got to spend some time in that Bible. Why? Because that Bible will start to work on you. That Bible will speak to you. Do you understand that Bible will talk to you, and it does not get embarrassed when it tells you something because it's giving you the truth. And uh, he won't give the truth, uh, truthful answer uh, or the answer he should give. Uh, he will not, he'll duck it. You know what? Man will duck the answers. You, you watch it. I don't, I don't want to get political, but I, I think they teach in politics Duck 901. I mean, they just, you ask them a question, they go, doop, 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 everywhere but what the question requires, an answer. You got a question, give the man or the lady an answer. They don't like it. Okay, at least you gave them the answer. Some people don't like things when it comes out of the Bible. You think I like everything that Bible says? No. No. I, know, I find it hard to understand some of it. I mean, that we ought to have love one for another. There's some people hard to love. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Including the preacher. Amen. <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm going to get in trouble. That's all right. I've been there. But sometimes you, we get the Bible and says, well, what's the Bible say, right? And then when it tells you something, you... you well, I, it, it doesn't really mean it. It, doesn't, it wasn't referring to me. Well, who was it referring to? You know, it's like I'm, I'm just getting aggravated. And, and I tell you why. I'm the last of 10, well, actually last of 14 children in my family. And I've had brothers and sisters that ne rejected the word of God, took religion over the Bible. When, do you know, um, James Snyder comes every once in a while. Um, I led his ex-wife to the Lord. She was Hispanic. She was a Roman Catholic. And I took a Dewey Reams Roman Catholic Bible, Andy, and led that lady to Jesus Christ with it. Why? Because they don't tell you what that Bible says. You're not to be... How should I put it? Your allegiance should not be to a religion. We have the Word of God. Amen? Do we? King James Bible, the Word of God? Okay. If that Bible says something, then you need to pay attention. First of all, is it applicable to you? 
is that Bible talking to me? Is it saying? Because some of it, and that's why Ben's doing Old Testament, New Testament survey. That's why we, we understand that there's dispensations in the Bible, different times. Like God dealt with different people, and God dealt with the Jews predominantly, and now he stepped away from the Jew, and he's dealing basically with Gentiles. But any Jew can get in, right? Right? For God so loved the world, I believe they're in the world, don't you? That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, anybody a whosoever in here? Well, you got saved if your whosoever believeth him should not perish but have everlasting life. Those are promises of God. Those are words of God given to you. And you know what we do with that Bible? We, we try to take those words, especially when it offends us. And so why I started that thing off telling you, and I, I'm supposed to be teaching, but I'm sorry, I get excited anyway. The, the deal of it is you've got to understand that book was given to you for a purpose. To God, once you got saved, did he not put the Holy Spirit of God in you? Okay. What did he leave you here, that spirit here for? That was a deposit. You know what a deposit is? A deposit is something you put down on something uh, or, or that you put in there, and he left that Holy Spirit because one day he's coming back. That Holy Spirit has a job. You know what he does? He tells you when you're right. He tells you when you're wrong. He leads you and guides you and directs you when you let him. You can't blame the Holy Spirit of God if he tries to show you something and direct you in something, and all of a sudden you go against it and blame God. Well, I did it my way. Well, that's you're not Frank Sinatra, and you don't need to be singing that way. You do it God's way, or it's the wrong way. Amen. It's that simple. You're in or you're out. You're up or down. Simplistic. But you know what people do? Well, I, what about this? What? No, no. I got a Bible. How, why is it we go in to school, if you go to school? I don't know how they teach anymore. Do they use books in school anymore? Computers, that's it? Are the teachers robotic? <laughs> They have no books in school? No. You homeschool, am I correct, Ms. Julie, you homeschool? And is that internet or is that books that you get? Both, a mixture? Because the, the girls, um, the girls are women now, but they want um, a Becca, the Abeka program out of Florida, um, Pensacola uh, Christian College. And the reason we want that direction was because they assured us that they could pass high school, they could go in to college, and pretty much any college they wanted to, they respected that pretty much. Anyway, it implies, although that you obey words uh, and demand, you really don't take them and use them in the way that you should. The Bible, it says, a servant will not be corrected by word. Well, <laughs> if that Bible can't correct you, it's not going to do any good for you, is it? You ever get up, the Bible just says something totally opposite of what you think, and you go, well, somebody's wrong. We have a Bible that is sent from God. Every word of God is true, right? We have a Holy Spirit of God inside of us. Now, have you ever read something in the Bible and the Holy Spirit goes, yes, amen, that's true? Amen? Well, if the Holy Spirit says yes and the Bible says yes, why do we say no? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. And so what he's doing here, he won't be corrected. And that's a lot of Christians, they go, well, I just think you're mean. You're just got a, I don't have a mean spirit. I should. If you knew what I came out of, what my brothers and sisters died in, Catholicism, believing that the only true way was the Catholic Church, brethren, they're going to burn in hell for eternity, and it breaks my heart. You're saying it over YouTube. Did I lie? Well, 
for though they understand, he will not. He will not give the truthful answer. They understand, but they're not. You ever been around somebody, you got them cornered, and you give them the truth? And they go, well, yeah, but. You understand what it's trying to imply to you? All right, pick it up in verse 20. Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words? There's no more hope of a fool. Uh, uh, more hope, excuse me, there is more hope of a fool than of him. You say, what, you ever meet somebody who talks so fast? <laughs> you ever get around somebody like that? They're just just won't shut up like a preacher. <laughs> it's just, do, 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 just, but they say nothing. You ever, you've been around that, Ben? You ever get around some of these people that try to say, well, you know, the Bible, there's errors in the Bible. Show me one. Show me one. I'll tell you what, it's better to be thought a fool than open your mouth and leave no room for doubt at all. The fool has said, let's see, when I say that, people look at you like, that's me. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. I didn't say anything the Bible doesn't say. But you know what? If you don't believe that Bible, what do you believe in? He talks too quick. And we've already covered this in 19 to, uh, you know, 21. Yeah, the problem is, You either believe this book, allow this book to work in you, or you'll have to deal with God. That's just that simple. There's been many a man that's tried to discount that book. I've had him say, don't talk to me of that God stuff. There ain't no God. Sir, I didn't think you were a fool. You call me a fool. I don't call you a fool. The Bible did. See, the problem is, is we let them get away with these things. We let them be in control. And the Bible tells us the word of God is, is not bound. Verse 21, he that delicately bringeth, bringeth up his servant from a child shall have him become his son at the length. And, um, it, you know, it's pretty basic. We talked about that thing about train up a child in the way he should go and when he's old not depart from it. But the case of Abraham had no children, Genesis 15, verse 1 and 2. Uh, Galatians chapter 4, um, uh, one, verse 1 and 2, uh, who gets the, the stuff. It's case of uh, 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 no rival, no son. He gets what, what the boy would get if it's, he was a true son. So uh, basically the inheritance that he would get is basically what they're talking about. So... Look at verse 22. An angry man stirreth up. What? And a furious man aboundeth in transgression. You know, angry people, you know who angry people were in history? How about Castro? He was an angry person. Killed literally thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people. How about Hitler? He's an angry man. Literally, how many thousands, hundreds of thousands, what's it in the millions, Chuck, Jews that died? Why? You say because of him? Well, because of their rejection of the Messiah, I would say. But when you reject God, then all care is off. The Holocaust was a horrible thing. Puts people in countries, uh, uh, and people in countries, and trust wrong people. An angry man closes his eyes; he doesn't see, and he won't look at what's going on. Angry. Uh, you say, "I lost my temper." No, I've never met a person that lost their temper. I've seen it too many times. When you lose, you see the words we, I lost my temper. No, you didn't. You showed me your temper. You didn't lose. It was right there. I saw it. I've had people say things to me, you say to a preacher. First of all, I'm a man. Secondly, I'm a preacher and a pastor. But I don't take that stuff to heart. Man, I worked in construction too many years. I worked in the car business too. I, I'm, I had people call me everything but nice. 
you know what you have to do? You have to look within yourself and say, okay, am I doing right? Am I right with that book? Am I right with God? Am I doing it in the right way? If you are, you know what? People are going to get angry about that. You think you're so prompt and proper. You're so spiritual. No, I don't think I'm spiritual, honestly, at all. You'd be, at, I don't want you talking to Serena anytime, but you'd be around Serena. You'd know that sometimes I, I just, the flesh gets control sometimes. Not should be, shouldn't be that way, but I'm just an individual. I fight battles every day just like you do. Every day. But you know what I ask the Lord to do? Give me strength to open my mouth when I need to. And when I open my mouth, God, give me the charity in my heart to say the right thing with the right attitude. Amen? Um, one of the things I've always tried to be cautious of, especially around young people, I don't want to be that individual that gives you a license to act stupid. Amen? I, won't, I don't want, Ben will tell you if, I, if there's something going on, I'll sit down and talk with him about it, why I'm doing it, how I'm doing it, because I, I don't want to put anything that's wrong into that young man. I want him to see that, you know what, I'm flesh, I'll make mistakes, and I'll own up to it when I made them, because that's what you're supposed to do. You're not perfect yet. You will be one day if you're saved. Amen? But until you kick this thing off, and Andy, if I could get rid of this, if I could get rid of me, that sounds stupid, doesn't it? But if I really could get rid of me, guess what? We'd be all right. But I have emotions. I have ups and downs and battles every day. But you know what? I think the sister hit it on the head, the nail on the head when you think about it. What do you deserve? Old preacher used to say you deserve to be in hell with your back broke. Every day, you say, you don't know what I'm going through. Every day, wake up like this. Lord, you woke me up. Thank you for the rest last night. Thank you for a God I can talk to. Thank you, Lord, that I'm saved. Thank you, Lord, that I've got a family. I've got a roof over my head. I know where I'm going. I've been saved. I know, I know that heaven's mine, and one day I'll be with you. For You see, when you start thanking God, you won't start looking at your situations. Amen. It's hard to thank God and go, arr, arr, arr. <laughs> you ever say, thank you, Lord, <laughs> like that? You can't do it. You got to keep the right attitude. People like bad tempers. Slow to anger is what the Bible tells you, James chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. Psalms 37, 8, God is angry with what? <laughs> you, you really believe that? I believe it. Why? Because the Bible says it. All I'm trying to impute to you is this, an angry man stirreth up strife. Someone's angry, they've got to get someone to be in on it with them to give them justification for being what they are. Just telling you, brethren, I'm not reflecting on anything. I'm telling you the truth. If somebody comes up to you with an angry spirit and wants to engage in something, you know what's the best thing you can do? I'll pray for you and walk away. Why? Because anger is something that gets... It becomes contagious. It starts working on the, those around you, those that you're with every day when you just won't let it go. The Bible says, be angry and sin not. There are things you should be angry about. Amen? I get angry if somebody touches that book and starts messing with that book. Don't you, Chuck? You know, I, why? Like Lester Roloff. So anybody know who Lester Roloff was? You know what he said about that book? He said, a man come knocking on my door and has that, that book in his hand, and he says, you know what? What would you do if I walked in the door and I said, I'm here, and I'm here to see your mama? And the rest of all off looked at him and said, what are you talking about? He said, I'm going to take your mama, and I'm going to rip her arm off here. I'm going to take your mama, and rip her other arm off. He said, and what do you think of that? He said, I don't think you'll get out my door. He held that Bible and says, 
this is my mama here. And a lot of y'all are doing it now. You're taking it and you're ripping out pages. You're rip, taking out words. And he says, I'm going to tell you something. That Bible is going to stand when it's all done with. You see what I'm talking about? Anger. Anger. If you look in the world today when they're running the streets and literally taking. I'm scared to death for my daughter, for my wife. I'm a, I'm a man. They, you know, they shoot me. Well, they ain't hurting anything. But you, know, I, my, I, you women out there driving, you, you need to be cautious. They're pulling them over with guns, taking their car, kicking them, shooting them. Doesn't matter what they're doing to them. And we're living in a bad time right now. A bad temper. Be angry and sin not, according to Ephesians 4, verse 26. We should get angry at certain times. Look at, um, look at Titus, the book of Titus, little book of Titus. Titus, uh, somebody gets there first, read it for me. Titus chapter 1. I just bypassed it, I think. No, I didn't. Titus chapter 1, look at uh, verse 13. Uh, the witness, this witness is true, wherefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in faith. Look at verse 11. Whose mouths must be stopped and subvert whole houses, teaching things that they ought not. For filthy lucre's sake, going on today, one of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, the Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, so bellies. This witness is true, wherefore rebuke them sharply. You know what you need to do when you get around people that are like that? Start rebuking them. Take the word of God and rebuke them. And you know, most people can't handle rebukes. The Bible says, one of Buddy's favorite verses, Chuck, open rebuke is better than... Do you know you're doing someone a favor when you rebuke them with the word of God and you're trying to help them and not doing it with the wrong spirit? <laughs> you, ever, you ever take the Bible? Ever been rebuked by the Bible, Chuck? I've been rebuked quite a few times. Preacher there, you got that wrong. Okay, thank you for it. I'm looking at y'all, y'all looking at me, and it's like, what are you doing? I'll say some nice things in a minute. <laughs> Those nice things ain't going to help you. You know what this book will do? This book is meat, it's milk, it's fruit, it's everything that you need for nourishment. But it also is a rebuking book. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Paul said to the Galatians, am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? You see, that's what's lacking in this day and age. And I dare say it's, I'll be dead and gone if the Lord tarries, and it'll still be lacking. Why? Because, brethren, most people don't want the truth. They don't really want to, you know, it's, Rex used to say, there was a song out years ago, put a nickel in, in the nickel, load in, all I want to hear is music. Use it, use it. I just want to hear the sweet thing. But you need to realize the God you serve, the God that wrote this book. Amen. You say men wrote that book. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Amen. God instructed them, inspired them to write this book. I know a lot of it is history, but there's a lot of it prophetical too. You ever get in the book of Revelation? Well, it's after 8. I'm at verse 22, Chuck, so I, I feel like I'm not doing very well here. But the deal of it is, brethren, I believe in John 3.16. I believe in love. Greater love have no man that lay down his life for him. I believe that God commended his love towards us in the while we were yet sinners, Christ. So I believe that. But I also believe what Jesus Christ did. Oh, you scribes, Pharisees, and hypocrites, you make twofold the child of hell. That's your Lord talking. That's your Savior talking. He 
You see, the problem is we cannot handle solid, sound preaching because it hurt my feelings. I always look at a preacher when he has to get up there and God instructs him to do it if he's led of God to do it. Do you realize, Ben, when you get ready to preach, how many times do you have to go through the verses in the direction of the Spirit of God to say what you're going to say? More than once, probably more than twice, probably more than three. Do you know how many times we have to go through that and the Lord turns that thing around and says, now you can preach since I've been cut you up. You don't get a song, hit it one time and say, We're, we got it. You know what you got to do? You got to let that song not only go out of you, but come through you. Amen. You want to do something for God? Sometimes you got to go through some things. Sometimes you got to wake up, get a cold glass of water thrown in your face and say, wow, I'm not as spiritual. I'm not as goody as I think I am. And the Lord's smacking me around a little bit. But, you know, whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receives. See, we're Bible believers here. We believe this book. Amen? And we believe the Bible still means open rebuke is better than secret love. We still understand that God commended his love towards us. Listen, Romans 5, 8, God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners. You know what Christ did? And was, were you on his team then? No. Brethren, I'm just trying to tell you something. We need to see. They just put another new track rack out there. Talked to Jonathan yesterday, and uh, they got more tracks they want to put up. We need, I also, I, on that thing, Jesse fixed my phone. Thank you, Jesse. I got that message tonight. But um, he fixed my phone for me after I've had it for a year. But one of the things that was on that 41 messages was a man sort of um, using his third grade education to tell me how stupid I am. Uh, but he didn't need to call me to tell me that. I already knew it. He said, I thought you people were spiritual people. Don't hang those things on my door anymore. Well, First of all, if you're spiritual, you would appreciate somebody bringing around something telling you about the greatest thing that ever happened to man, Jesus Christ. See, what did you do with it? I deleted it. I'm not going to answer a fool according to his folly. And he is a fool. And if, that, if that's salvation, I don't want that. <laughs> Amen. I mean, go deal with God. I've, I've seen a guy put a track on a windshield. And a guy freaked out, you touched my windshield. Well, I was trying to give you life, man. <laughs> All right. Jason, pray for us. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. You're, you're not going to be here Sunday, are you? 